Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching Your Town Television. My guest, Richard O. Last week, we celebrated the uh, release of your new uh, sparkling wine. Yes. Uh, let's just talk about that for a moment. Well, it's under the O label. I have two, Otter Cove and O. I've been wanting to bring out a sparkling for a long time and just finally made it happen. And it's just gone bonkers. It's, uh, it's a Blanc de Noir, 70% Pinot Noir, 30% Chardonnay grapes. It is out of the Lodi region, uh, but it's been so well, so well received. So how, how does one go about creating a sparkling wine? I mean, <laughs> how, because you, you know what you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sparkling takes a long time. Uh, it's got to ferment in the bottles. and it's, it's a 2020 vintage, so it was a two-year process to bring that out. And so that's why probably a lot of people don't, or the wineries don't bring out a sparkling, because it does take a lot of effort. But I'm glad I did, and it's been it's been awesome. So how many how many years have you been d doing releases? Well, under my your, first under vintage label. under yes. the Otter Cove, uh, I started with uh, a Syrah, and then added on different varietals. That was back in 2004, and then I added uh, Pinots, um, Pinot Noirs, Chardonnay, Riesling, and now. The sparkling so and it was really good and uh it has gone like i said it's gone bonkers so many people um have ordered it first taste they're like oh my gosh that's so good so the it's been very well received and we had a bit of a release party which was a lot of fun yes and uh so you've been involved uh, as a community collaborator for a long time uh, you do a lot of public events. You do a lot of uh, particularly nonprofits, and yes. you've been uh, you've been very generous with what you do in the community. So that's been very much part of your your brand. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I've donated my time, um, lots of wine, uh, to these events, uh, uh, nonprofits and charities, and. I will continue to do that. It's just something that I was always grown up to do. And then, uh, and we'll get back to why this is important in a, in a few minutes, yes. but I also want to talk about the art of pairing wine with food, which doesn't sound complicated, but it is complicated. And you've been doing uh, private parties for a long time with, with these wine pairings. And with uh, it's not only a pairing of the wine with the food, but it's a pairing of the chefs with each other, and and then this whole thing that you do. And, and let's explain that. Yeah, so uh, probably, I don't know, it's probably been 12 years now. Uh, we started doing this once a month at my home. Uh, I have like four to five chefs that would come over, and, and they would just all pick a course, and but then, at about two years ago, we started having a little more format to it. Pick a theme. And each chef would take a course, and I would pair their dish with the wine. But the challenge is, for me, is that I don't know how the food's going to taste. So they give me the ingredients, and... I pick the wine, depending on the theme. If it's a French, Italian, or Japanese theme, I would go try to pick those regions, those wines, to pair with each course. And that's been my challenge. But it's worked out amazing. So what, what, do, you, what do you know, and why do you know, and what gives you this special skill to do this? Because this is not an easy thing to do. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, I, I started cooking very early on. And I always wanted to cook uh, with wine and do food and wine pairings. One of my uh, mo uh, models were uh, Julia Child. Uh -huh. And uh, she would always cook with wine and drink, drink the and wine. Yeah, I drink it too. Yeah, and, and you said, that looks fun. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So I started cooking when I was like about 14 and then started uh, experimenting with wines when I was 16. 
but don't tell anyone. <laughs> but um, and it's I've just developed a palate for that. Yeah. And, and, and then you ha you have been in the you have been in the restaurant business as well. Yes. Uh, yes. Let, let's talk about a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah. So I've had two restaurants in, in, in Carmel, California. Uh, my last one was a classic French Carmel Boucher. Uh, it's it's now Mission Bistro. Uh, I've got out of that uh, two years ago, and I just love the restaurant scene and the food, the wine, the people. The people. Yes, definitely the people. So, what what this is leading to? Uh, so the the what you've been trying to put together through uh, your work with the chefs, your work with the pairings, your working with the community, and uh, just the idea, and, and, uh, and then spending years in, in, uh, in restaurants dealing with, you know, knowing what an entertaining night with food is about, uh, is the idea of putting a show together. Well, I love entertaining. <laughs> yeah. And I do, uh, I do some magic tricks too, so I entertain them on that level as well. But when you get the perfect pairing, the wine and food, they go so well together. It's just, it truly is amazing. And, and people enjoy that. And I love seeing people's faces. They're smiling, loving the food and wine. It's just, it's a good feeling. As a show, yes. uh, what's really interesting is that how uh, both competitive and cooperative chefs are. So what, what, you, what you do is you set up a dynamic where the, the chefs are really competing with each other to outdo each other, but they work as a team with each other. And so they're, you know, they're bringing their game for each other. The, the audience, the people who get to eat it, that's, that's, that's all lovely and secondary. But these guys are, and, and women are, um, they're there to impress each other. And, and you see their artistry, you see how they work. You see how uh, what it looks like with skilled chefs in a kitchen. How they, how precise they are. How on it they are. How passionate they are. Oh, uh, and you're always learning. Oh yeah, constantly learning. And it's amazing to watch these chefs how they collaborate. But then on that competitiveness too. But. That collaboration is just amazing. They come in and they'll help each other prep the food, plate the food, and it's just, but it's their creation. And it's, it truly is amazing uh, when you taste it with the wine. Well, food by itself, but with the wine, it, it adds another element. To and, it. and plus, you're usually, I'd have to say, you, you have a pretty high percentage of your tastings and your pairings work. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I, actually, they've all worked. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah, they've all worked. Uh, and uh, does that amaze you when they work? Uh, well, it does. It, <laughs> and it, it, it comes together because I not never taste know. the food. You, I don't know. No, yeah. Until that day, yeah. until that time comes and open the wine and pair it, and it's like, ah. Oh. It's a bit of a tightrope walk, And I'm it? like, it gives me so much satisfaction to watch that. And on people's faces, how everything comes together. It's just um, so. So for the show idea, um, kind of what you've, you've 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 thought of taking the what you do in private with these private parties yes. to make a more uh, and and you're taking that part of what you do with uh, your your work in the community that you do because you're 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 pretty if if it's an important event if it's a if it's an important cause you make sure that you're there. Taking what uh, the, the private piece with the, uh, with the nonprofits that you promote mm -hmm. and so that each show becomes, you, ha you have the entertainment of the, you have the entertainment of the, of the chefs and the making of the food and the, and the pairing and the drama of the pairing. Yes. And then you're talking, you're, you're pairing that with a Real interesting community conversation because each of these nonprofits is is a group of interesting people uh, with an interesting cause, and then you work with a uh, uh, another part of the creative community because it's it's just there's there's several people that 
each each play a different part of each uh, yes. each scene that you're in. But you 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 have a lot of the the same team that will show up for you. Yes, that yeah. you can make a something that's watchable, that has importance beyond itself. That you're doing you're doing good. You're doing well. You're having fun. And then everybody gets to eat, yeah, oh yeah, and then the, the food is great. So the, the chefs explain why they do what they did, yes. why they pick what they what they picked, yes. yeah. uh, and a, a little bit of the history of the food. And again, until I saw what you did, I never thought of artists or or, or chefs as artists and 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 collaborators with other artists. It's edible art. And it is. It is edible art. And and so that that's what you've uh that's what you've done yes. and the possibilities of this and also the possibilities of locations that you have yeah. on this uh peninsula and your relationships on this peninsula um is makes this an eminently doable, eminently watchable show. Yeah. And 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 you've been had this in the works and work pro working on this for a long, long time. Yes, yes, and so the show Dining with Wine O, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's endless. We can do it in a private home, we could do it at a restaurant, we could go to Italy, we can go to France and do this, and go to Paris and seek out four chefs in that area and then seek out the wines from that area and just pair it together. It's just, it's, it's endless and do good, right? Yeah. So each episode, we're gonna, it's gonna benefit a nonprofit or a charity. So do good. Do good, exactly. do well, have fun. Exactly. Okay. I'm Mark Bear with Richard O. Dining with Wino. Dining with Wino. Greetings. My name is Richard O, and I will be your host this evening. Tonight, we celebrate Southern food. We will be doing a five course food and wine pairing prepared by five incredible chefs. This is Dining with Wino, an evening to savor. Let's go meet the chefs. All right, first All right. course, five schools, <laughs> Chef Jacques. Nice to meet you, enchanté, bonjour. <laughs> so we are now, who's I'm going to speak French only tonight, right? Everyone's understanding? Sauté and Louisiana. Oui, oui. oui, oui. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> okay, we have a crab cake here. So in the crab cake, we have a lot of vegetables, celery, bell pepper, scallion, and then you have some cajun, you have some uh, uh, smoked paprika, and I don't remember what the heck I put inside, but there's <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of lots of us. <laughs> and the small salad then you have over here, you have uh, a kind of a preserved lemon with uh, uh, cayenne pepper, so you have the kick. I hope I didn't put too much. Uh, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, and the radish sauce sprout on it. For the uh, dressings that we have over here, unfortunately, I forgot my dressing. So it's Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. It's not the days that we use. Monday is our Sunday. Here. So <laughs> our dear friend uh, Colleen uh, saved a oh, little yeah? bit, uh, uh, and he did. Uh, mm. I did what you told me to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a classic remoulade. You know, a little, a little pickle. We paprika. We did garlic. A little Dijon. Uh, pickle juice. Shh, don't tell anybody. Thanks. <laughs> voilà. So, please don't be shy. Enjoy your meat. Okay. So we're pairing this up with Twisted Roots Sparkling Rosé. It is 100% Pinot Noir grapes. So enjoy. All right, guys. So. This is our fried chicken and waffle with uh, spice poached pear and uh, uh, a really, really well seasoned uh, syrup underneath. Um, thank you, Colin, for the plates. Bones are in the thigh, really. So mind your teeth um, and uh, yeah, get slutty, eat it. <laughs> eat it all. Uh, so everyone. Please grab a glass. Oh, yes. We're preparing this up with a dry Riesling from the Mosel area of Germany. Mm -hmm.
He used to have a baker be like, some of these in one hand and the other is on the hand with. And he's like, hey, you know, when you're in the bedroom, you're not going to have water. The water is going to light up. That's why it's up Uh, traditional New Orleans uh, dish, so red beans and rice, and there's four different types of pork in there between the smoked ham hock, andouille sausage, the pickled pork, and then the, uh, oh, a little bit of bacon. I, I'm very uh, uh, lean on the cooking, so I'm, I'm a low butter, low fat type thing, and I think it's showing in the cornbread. I got some pickled red onions and uh, just the green onions to, to uh, garnish it with. And then this is, if anybody likes it spicy, this is the stuff here. It's togarashi that I mix up with some uh, ghost pepper. And it'll, uh, I already tried some, you can tell, all right? <laughs> My ears are starting to sweat, but I haven't seen how hot it was. But if you like it spicy at all, this is really, really good on there. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, enjoy, uh, Richard, what'd you pair it with? Uh, we have the Fell Pinot Noir from Anderson Valley. So if anyone yeah. grab a glass, and nice. we can get started on our go, go. <laughs> course number three. So we're doing my favorite southern meal, which is shrimp and grits, but we put a little California coastal spin on it with the spot prawns, and we have some local heirloom tomatoes and Baker's wonderful bacon that we seared. Then we have a nice little truffle smoked grits and some Big Sur chanterelles on top. A little truffle to finish it. That was awesome. That was amazing. Yes. Wow. Oh wait, you know what? We're missing something. Hold on. I need a picture of that. Oh, oh, oh. oh. The secret sauce. I told I was, you. I was looking, yes, you did. You I told, told you. You told me. Why did I do you. a good job here? Yeah. Lights you told me. Says the man who forgot the sauce. <laughs> yeah, you forgot your sauce. Yeah. It works at home. <laughs> so you know what? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Because so we helped each other, right? Like he forgot his sauce, I forgot my sauce. Here we go. You know what? My sauce is ready for the next meal. <laughs> so, so this is what I was telling you earlier is the anduja, which is not not anduja, but N D U J A, which is a southern Italian spicy sausage made from uh, prosciutto and a little Calabrian chilies. Nice little spicy kick. Shrimp and grits. That's what we're having. So what's so we're pairing this with the uh, GSM. I find it. No, this is this is this is mine. Oh, oh, I found one.